Hi everyone, I'm Michael Short. This is Let's Go Outdoors. Let's go outdoors where the waters run clear and cold. Mother Nature's world is better than gold. So much to see, so much to do. Let's go outdoors, me and you. Let's Go Outdoors with Michael Short. Supported by the Alberta Conservation Association. Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Go Outdoors. I'm Michael Short. And I'm Elma Mehmet-Begovic. It's a raptor that was almost wiped out here in Alberta, but after more than 50 years, the peregrine falcon is returning to its traditional nesting grounds. Hi. And Lois Holt Provincial Park is one of the newer parks in our province. We take a closer look at the relationship this special area has with its big city neighbour. So next thing? Mary Holbert continues with her outdoor education. This time she's sizing up some archery equipment. Excellent shooting. Looking for a job where you get to gaze out the window and stare at clouds all day? Well, here's one to consider. It's anything but the daily office grind. The views are spectacular and you'll see all kinds of wildlife. But as we found out, it's certainly not for everybody. Yeah, 282, 281 uh, on the ladder. This is how Roy Schneider dresses for the job each day. And this is how he gets to work, clicking into a safety line and climbing up to his 10th story corner office. Roy is a lookout observer for the Alberta government. He put himself through college doing the same job back in the 70s and then went on to a stress-filled career in the print industry. He retired, and now he's back. Needless to say, if you're afraid of heights, this isn't for you. And don't expect many days off. I worked last year 198 days straight without a day off. After that many days, do you go a little squirrely? Yeah, we call it bushed, yeah. <laughs> One major perk is all the wildlife you'll experience. Actually, I had a grizzly up here this year, which is the first in a number of years up here. There's lots and lots of black bears. I mean, I've hundreds of run-ins with black bears over the years, right? Never had one try and climb the ladder? <laughs> no, I've had one wait at the bottom. Kept me up for a while, you know. He was just kind of curious, right? And you never leave them anything to get interested in, so they never have a good experience. It's the first strike from, from flat top. She's got lightning over there. Probably from that cell right there, yeah. Brenda Poulin also works for the Alberta government. Keep climbing. Climb, keep climbing. She's thinking about working in a tower once she retires. Wow, this is incredible. <laughs> Have you not been up a tower before? No, first oh, yeah. time. You know, these are the Swan Hills, so there's, there's a lot of terrain there, right? And then as we swing up north, it flattens out, and you can see Moscow, you know? <laughs> The number of hours a day that Roy spends in the cupola, as it's called, depends on the fire hazard, from two hours when it's low to... Extreme 13, 14 hours a day up here, right? You do get to go down for lunch. You ever measure how many stairs that is? It's 100, one a foot, yeah. Visitors are rare, so there's plenty of time for a cup of coffee with Brenda, who liked what she saw today. Beautiful country, like you just can't beat this. I'm working in an office for 33 years, it's, it'd be a nice change, absolutely. Nonetheless, I had a hunch Roy wasn't telling her everything about the job. Like, does the tower ever get hit by lightning? I've been hit by lightning I don't know how many times over the years. These are very well grounded, right? But it's still, I mean, blow out your radios and stand your hair on end, that's for sure. Well, yeah, what does it feel like? Like, how do you know you've been hit? Oh, you know you've been hit. <laughs> the noise is horrendous, and, and I've had sparks jumping uh, from metal object to metal object up here. Uh, 20281, uh, uh, first strike for you uh, from Martin Tower. And what about the risk of the lookout tower being right in the path of a forest fire. Yeah, actually, I've been evacuated from this tower uh, twice now. This is the Richardson Tower, north of Fort McMurray. 
The observer was evacuated before Alberta's largest ever forest fire came through. It can get really exciting and, and quite edgy, right? I mean, it depends how, how our hazard is. If our hazard's very high and we have a lot of lightning, you know, I mean, we're really on our toes because, because things flash very fast, you know. We've had 40, 40 fire days in, in Slave Lake District, right? That'll keep you hopping. 40 new fires in one day. You are Alberta's first line of defense for spotting and reporting wildfires. Your early detection can initiate water bombers into action so that fires can be extinguished before they get out of control. This is a, this is a great job. If you like peace and quiet and you like nature, you're doing good things, right? You're stopping fires and protecting communities and stuff. Still interested? Job opportunities are limited. There's 128 towers in the province, right? You, you only have to find 128 crazy people and you're good to go, right? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure I can handle that kind of isolation. What about you, Elma? I think it would be the climbing of that tower every day that would get to me. Well, speaking of climbing, it won't be long, and our Mary Hulbert will be ready to make her way up a tree stand with a bow and arrow. It's her first time at archery, and she has a pro along to pass on a few tips. Let's see how she does. I know we're here at Beaver Hills Lodge, but it's a really great uh, place to try out some archery as well. So what do we have in store? So today we've got the, uh, the G5 Torrent. I think it'll be perfect for you to shoot here. Great bow, comes set up as a package. You've got your sights, your rest, your wrist sling, quiver, and uh, stabilizer as well. So we've got all the components you need. There's a couple of external things we've got here, just your trigger release and your arm guard. Wow. A bow has to uh, fit you properly or it's not going to shoot correctly. So the first thing we'll do is measure your draw length, which basically is the measurement of how far you will pull the bow back. So what I'll get you to do is I'm going to put this in the small of your throat okay. and you can clap your hands forward. Just like this, as Just far like as I can that. go? Perfect. So this is measuring at 29 inches. Yes. Is that good? That's perfect. You're going to get uh, a lot more speed than I will. So uh, basically what's next is we'll, uh, we'll try on your trigger release here and make sure that it fits you as well. So if I can have your right hand, just lay it on top for me. Like there you go. Now that just fits right around your wrist. Okay. And if you flip your hand over for me. It's sitting right here on the palm of your hand, okay. so it's the perfect length for you. All right. And if you make a fist around the post, it's just sticking out of your fist. It's going to okay. be excellent length. It'll be perfect for where your finger is when you're shooting. The other thing we're going to do is, because you're a new shooter, Certainly we're going to put am. an arm guard on you just to protect your, uh, your left arm. So what does this do exactly? This is basically, it's got uh, steel boning in here, okay. so it's going to keep the string from hitting your arm and giving you a nasty bruise. So the bruise would come from the, the strings hitting my arm. Yeah, now the other thing that an arm guard is good for is when you're hunting, if you're wearing a thicker jacket like this, yeah. then it's going to keep your jacket out of the way. If your string hits your jacket, it's going to be very, very loud. So oh gosh, that could scare, scare the deer away. away. Yeah. So I've just lost my jacket and I'm here with you, Lisa, and I'm ready to learn more about archery. So what's the next step? The first thing we can talk about is, is why it has these, these wheels and cams on it. Okay. Um, basically, it's, it's all about mechanical advantage. What's going to happen is when you pull back, it's actually going to let off a certain amount of the weight. So you're only holding 20%. So this bow, about 40 pounds. So you're looking at a holding about 13 to 15 pounds. Oh. All right, you think you're ready? So All right. I'll hand you the bow. You'll want to so put your hand right through this wrist sling here. Okay, and just grab like that. Perfect, yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to put your first arrow on there just to show you where it's sitting. Now you want this white fletch pointing up. And why is that? Just for consistency. You want it pointed up this the whole time okay. so that it'll fly the same way every time. All right. And then you just attach the trigger here. Yeah, right onto the D-loop. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now you're going to want to position your hand right on top and just close your fingers around that post. All right, like this. Yep. And then my big knuckle is going by yep. my neck. This big knuckle is going right in behind your earlobe. And then I pull both ways at the same time. Both ways. Push and pull. There you go. Pull, pull, pull. And you're going to want to look through your peep sight there. Line the peep sight up with your top sight and you can take your shot. Excellent shooting. Great. That was pretty much almost a bullseye. Almost. I'm gonna go get some deer later. How about I take one last one here and try to uh, aim for the deer? Yeah, that's gonna be a, a harder shot. That's 20 yards. 
<laughs> Nick, I think we just got our butts kicked. <laughs> That's pretty good. That one's even better. Venison for everyone! <laughs> wow. Three for three. Can you believe that shooting? I cannot wait to try some of that venison stew. Let's hope she can deliver. Coming up, we will visit one of Alberta's newest provincial parks. The Alberta Conservation Association is proud to be partnered with Alberta Fish and Game Association, Alberta Hunter Education Instructors Association, Alberta Professional Outfitters Society. Time now for a look at our outdoor community calendar. Well, right now we're going to take a look at some remarkable technology that has already proven itself in the field. Devon Energy is using a state-of-the-art photo system called LiDAR that can help the company respond to problems on their vast pipeline system. Whether by land, water, or air, thanks to an innovative technology, Devon Canada has the ability to monitor its vast territory of pipelines. Mike Head is the president of ViewWorks. He's adapted special cameras which are capable of taking 360 degree photos and when mounted on helicopters, he's able to cover a lot of territory. This photo reconnaissance is also invaluable when it comes to responding to any pipeline issues out in the field. We found that the, the line had ruptured and we were able to use this technology to quickly respond and understand from an environmental st uh, standpoint how we can access this to protect the environment and, and also deal with the situation in a timely manner where we were able to do it in a matter of hours and get all the key stakeholders together, get all the information in one room and present that to the regulatory people to get approval to move ahead and address the occurrence. It was a, a textbook case of saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in my mind and also to be able to respond to the situation 10 times faster than we ever could in the past. There's no question Devon sees the use of this technology as leading edge. This is a game changer. This is gonna change the way we do our business. It's great technology. I see, I see nothing but positives coming out of it. And I see a big positive for the industry as far as planning and managing our, our industry or managing our business. Energy companies are mandated to inspect their pipelines at least once a year. New technology like this makes the information collected much more relevant due to the fact it's collected and distributed much faster. Well, we're bringing this data that's available to us electronically today into a central location such as Grand Prairie and taking this information and being able to manage our business on a real-time basis rather than the history where we would dispatch operators out into a field to check multiple sites during the day. We're able to, to take our technology, this being part of it, and bring that live right into a local environment where we can monitor our operations 10 hours a day, seven days a week. Detailed photo records of the land base will no doubt go a long ways to ensuring our environment is protected during and after any resource development project. Edmonton has long been known for its remarkable River Valley Greenbelt, and just a few years ago, the city was further enhanced with the addition of a provincial park. One of the most amazing features of Lois Hole Centennial Provincial Park is the boardwalks that zigzag through the marshland. The real benefit of having these down here is that we can be very close to an urban center as this park is, but really have no good access to see some of the key species and the key habitats that you can see here. So these boardwalks provide that. Funding for these boardwalks came from Ducks Unlimited. For the most part, the birds seem undaunted by the sight of humans so close by. 
Right where we're standing, you can envision a whole classroom of kids, uh, you know, seven, eight year olds standing here with an interpreter standing right up on the stairs, explaining everything right in front of your eyes. Much of this area used to be in a natural area. In 2005, it was designated a provincial park and named after Lois Hole, a former Lieutenant Governor of Alberta and well-known gardening expert. Today, her sons operate that large greenhouse and garden center you see in the distance. A unique feature of this park is its proximity to urban centers. It sits right on the west boundaries of both St. Albert and Edmonton. As a parks division, we strive to have parks within um, an hour's drive of any uh, municipality, but this one is within minutes. And this gives us the opportunity to promote conservation and to promote nature to a lot of people that I'm not sure are necessarily even aware that these areas exist right on their doorstep. Big Lake covers over half of the park area, acting as stewards over the park. Big Lake Environmental Support Society have long been proponents of preserving the natural state of this land and provided funding for this lookout. Yeah, that they wanted people to be able to see the lake and get closer to the lake without actually getting into it because it is quite a, quite a muddy lake. These fishermen claim they read online that this was a good place to catch fish. But everything they caught while we were here looked more fit for a salad bowl than a frying pan. Just the same, the ever so cute Miss Jackson was having a good time. <laughs> She's cute, just not very smart. <laughs> Parking is nearby, but many of the locals arrive by bike or on foot. All those who visit are rewarded with a diverse gathering of waterfowl. Migrations of pelicans, trumpeter swans, blackbirds, uh, swallows, sprigs, pipits, yellow legs. You may not want to dip into what looks like pea soup, but to these coots and ducks, there's no place on earth they'd rather be. And being next to an urban area, you just might see a motorized bird or two. Lois Hole Centennial Provincial Park has been recognized as one of the 20 most important waterfowl habitats in Alberta. Little doubt this park will serve as a hub for environmental education, reaching thousands of school students in the greater Edmonton area. I recommend coming here in the late evening. The views, simply stunning. Coming up, we head out to visit a remarkable conservation site just east of Edmonton. The Alberta Conservation Association is proud to be partnered with Alberta Fish and Game Association, Alberta Hunter Education Instructors Association, Alberta Professional Outfitters Society, Time now for a look at our outdoor community calendar. Providing public access for activities like hunting, bird watching, or just hiking is part of the mandate of the Alberta Conservation Association and other conservation associations. The Golden Rancho site just east of Edmonton was purchased through collaborative efforts of a number of conservation groups and the oil and gas industry. If I'm attacked by a bear, don't let it drag off this leg because my car keys are in here. <laughs> With over 1,300 acres to walk, the Golden Ranch's property located along the eastern shore of Cooking Lake, just 45 minutes east of Edmonton, is a prime example of a number of conservation groups working together along with industry, local landowners, and the federal government to secure this kind of habitat. It's a great location. We're within Strathcona County, so it's not far at all for Sherd Park or Edmonton. 
and uh, really you've got 1,300 acres here at Golden Ranches um, and you're allowed duck hunting here on North Cooking Lake. You can have primitive weapon, uh, so archery, muzzle loader for uh, deer or get lucky enough to be drawn for an antlerless moose. So far we haven't had a lot of pressure out here which is kind of nice but I certainly want to make sure people are aware that the opportunity is here and heck if you don't want to hunt there's still lots of other things to come out and see as well. That's the first bed I've seen at all and it's not that fresh and I haven't seen any fresh droppings. With financial support from industry players like Suncor and Syncrude, as well as other funding partners, it's properties like Golden Ranches, which have to some extent helped with maintaining hunting numbers in Alberta. Alberta has been one of the jurisdictions in North America that actually has seen an increase in the number of people getting outdoors and doing hunting over the last five years, so that's been good to see. Uh, I don't know if that's 100% uh, the, uh, the result of the work uh, we've been doing and our member groups have been doing, but we'll take credit for it if we can get it for sure. It's been really good. I certainly have seen a lot more people getting involved. We've been supporting a lot more mentored hunts and first time hunt kind of uh, programs and we've seen those get filled up every time one of those is offered by ourselves or one of our member groups. So it really is good to see. And uh, you know, as I said today, the ducks might win but it's still worthwhile coming out even if you don't get something. Just the experience is really what we're trying to get people to understand. If you are planning to hunt a site like Golden Ranches, Brad Fenson has a few tips to help make sense of all those deer trails you'll come across. Hi, I'm Brad Fenson with the Alberta Fish and Game Association with your Outdoor Tip of the Week. You know, white-tailed deer are one of the most popular species in Alberta amongst hunters, and today we're going to show you how to focus your effort to be more successful. Reading sign and picking the best spot to increase your success. Here's another real active game trail. We got a big buck track here. The problem is I just came through this stretch of woods and I found 14 other game trails all with tracks. Where do I set up? Let's just have a look at this and we'll show you where to focus your efforts. Well, I'm excited to have found an active scrape. This is really going to increase my success rates. Bucks lay down a scrape line to basically put their calling card out for the neighborhood does. They put their gland and scent in here to identify themselves to the does, and they will be back to check this at least twice a day during the early season. This is really going to be helpful in finding a buck or get one to come to me. Well, we just spent the morning scouting my favorite deer hunting area and walking this great big block of bush in behind me, I found some wonderful deer trails. There's at least 15 of them with active tracks on it. They all funnel down to this little pinch point between the pasture and a wetland with a strip of trees that they're using as a travel corridor. This effectively lets me hunt all 15 of those game trails in one spot. What a perfect spot to set up a tree stand or a ground blind and really focus my hunting attention this fall. I got a good feeling about this spot. Coming up, it's a big day for these peregrine falcons as they return to their traditional nesting grounds along the Pembina River. The Alberta Conservation Association is proud to be partnered with Alberta Fish and Game Association. Alberta Hunter Education Instructors Association. Alberta Professional Outfitters Society. Time now for a look at our outdoor community calendar. Elma, can you name me the fastest member of the animal kingdom? Well, first, are we talking land animal or bird? Because if it flies, we must be talking about the peregrine falcon. Well, you're absolutely right. This bird of prey can reach speeds of over 300 kilometers an hour during its dive, but perhaps more impressive is the fact this bird is returning to its traditional nesting grounds along the Pembina River. <coughs> Well, it's moving day for these peregrine falcon chicks, a return to their traditional nesting grounds along the Pembina River. 
Many of these birds are returning to nest within meters of where their ancestors nested in 1969-1965. So we tend to go back to where the historical sites were, in this case the Pembina River. Alberta came close to losing this bird back in the mid-70s when we had just one breeding pair left. Pesticides like DDT being the lead cause to their decline. Since then, the combined effort of industry, conservation groups and government have brought these birds back from the brink. But the process was slow as the remaining birds had to be bred in captivity. And we were able to experiment with reintroduction in 1976, as early as 1976. And then that, once we got this system down, and we realized that the world was cleaning up after the ban on DDT in Canada in 1969 and followed by the ban in 1972 in the United States, DDT residue started to drop in wildlife. Yeah, with that sort of news, we decided to really try and uh, pick up the reintroduction of that captive stock. So we did that and happily, peregrines went off like a bomb in a clean environment. And we had uh, birds now, uh, the last survey was done in 2010 with over 500 pairs uh, estimated and, uh, or count in uh, southern Canada, south of the Boreal Forest and east of the Rockies. To see this kind of recovery, and at this scale, is certainly a positive environmental achievement for the province. But this is an amazing story, where, um, you know, a great environmental story where changes were made, and now we're seeing the outcome and the fruits of that labour to make sure that these falcons have a home here and that they're no longer extinct or, or near extinction. It's just a great story, and a great Alberta story as well about, uh, we care about the environment a lot, and this is, this is putting that real proof to it, to showing that we, we, we want to make sure that these uh, falcons are protected. Industry's role in the recovery of this remarkable bird was required when the falcons decided it was a good idea to nest on the tall stacks located at the Wabaman Lake Genesee Power Plant. Capital Power, which operates the plant, has played an active role in helping to re-establish the bird since the mid-1990s. We feel that it's kind of a natural progression of the work that we've done with falcons over the year. We have, uh, we have a falcon cam on the nesting box streaming to our corporate website for the world to watch. We've done tracking. We had uh, satellite tracking devices that track the falcons to South America on their winter migration. And this, this just follows in the same vein uh, to help this species that has had so much trouble in the past. It's just a, it's a privilege for us to be able to help, help out in this way. As to the release of these six chicks along the bank of the Pembina River, Gordon Cord is optimistic these birds will have a good chance of not only surviving, but being able to contribute to the growth of the species. The great things here, we've got a good uh, hack tenant, excellent landowner uh, protection and, uh, uh, and the lack of horned owls, which is a really big thing. Uh, horned owls can be really mess up these situations because they'll take the young. We haven't had an owl here in two years that, uh, that even came to the cliff, so look, no predation and a great uh, fledging success rate, so it looks very good. Yeah. They're so adorable. Are you kidding? They got a face only a mother could love. Oh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to catch previous stories featured on Let's Go Outdoors, then track down our website at letsgooutdoors.ca. Remember, the outdoors is here for all of us to enjoy. If you see someone taking away from that enjoyment, call the report a poacher line. Until next time, I'm Elma Mehmedbegovic. And I'm Michael Short. Let's Go Outdoors. I know where I want to be Outside wild and free Let's go outdoors Let's go outdoors You and me Let's go outdoors Where the waters run clear and cold Mother Nature's world is better than gold to see so much to do let's go outdoors me and you let's go outdoors Let's go.